Good day and welcome to the, the Silent Speaks Volumes. I'll be your host, Fazal Jacobs. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll be looking at the journey of being diagnosed with a term, potentially terminal illness, such as cancer. About three years ago, I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer, and fortunately, it was something we caught early enough. And the only side effect, as I call it, is the installation of uh, a new anus, because uh, the, the treatment that I needed was the removal of my anus as well as the tumor, uh, and that left me with a permanent stoma. So in, in, for those who don't know what a stoma is, my anus has been redirected to my side, and I now have a bag which I fondly call Dolce & Cabana. So over the next couple of weeks, our journey is going to focus on the emotional roller coaster from being diagnosed. It's the journey of the patient, um, the family and friends, the loved ones, and the doctors. Uh, we're hoping to have some doctors uh, join us in studio to discuss things from their perspective, what it must be like for them to give people bad news all the time, uh, get to know people who pass away uh, due to, 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 to an illness. It can't be easy for them as much as it isn't easy for the patient. And uh, also inviting into studio would be cancer patients, uh, survivors, uh, warriors, uh, as I like to call them, and then um, support staff uh, from uh, various uh, uh, faculties that's, that's available to us. And with that, I'd like to introduce two guests, our first two guests uh, to the show, and that would be Abida Stienkamp, who is a registered social worker and volunteer at CANCER, the South African Cancer Association, and then Woman, I finally recall the, the original warrior, um, a badass in her own right, um, Rehana Kasim. Uh, welcome, ladies, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Faisal. Um, Auntie Ray, as, as, as I fondly refer to her as, um, 14 years ago, you, you were diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. Um, would you mind sharing with us your journey? What took you to the doctor and that led up to the diagnosis? Yes, it's been 14 years on this journey, very challenging. I have no history of cancer in the family. I've breastfed. I did exercise. I ate, I ate the proper way. My lifestyle was like, according to myself, good. And then one evening when I got home, I found a lump. I didn't even go looking for the lump. I found a lump in my breast. And the same evening I went to the doctor. And when I got there, the doctor examined me, sent me for a mammogram, ultrasound. And when I returned to the surgery uh, the day later, his words were, I'm not going to beat around the bush, you have cancer. I can tell you I was shocked out of my skin. I actually didn't, I didn't believe him. I was in denial immediately. Mm -hmm. But when I left the surgery, I thought, why not me? What makes me different? And I'm going to have to accept this. I'm going to have to go through it. But I can tell you the shock was actually huge. I shared it with my husband, but his grandmother had cancer, breast cancer, and she survived like for 30 years. So that sort of gave him hope. And then when I got to my surgeon, I was referred to a breast surgeon, and he told me if I live for five years, I'd be so lucky. Wow. That surgeon passed on today. I'm still here, and I'm 14 wow. years on the journey. And as you know, I am metastatic. My cancer spread from my breast to my bone. It's been in my bone for 10 years. Normally you don't live past six years with a bone, with a cancer in the bone. I was also told if I have an injury in the bone, it will never heal due to the bone treatment. As you know, I fractured two fingers in running, the bones healed. So I wanna go back to my oncologist and just say that. So I went through chemotherapy, I went through radiation. I was told seven times I have cancer, but each, each time I just, you know, arise stronger. But there are challenges, but what I deal with, what I do is, it's not what happens to you, it's really how you deal with it. Mm. I had a pain in the hip, they did an arterial cancer in the hip, in my skull. Mm. So it's, um, and now they took me off treatment, so everybody's like, that's a good idea. But it's not, it's good and it's bad. Absolutely. Good is, it's not affecting me any longer. Bad is my cancer can spread. But I have to live with the idea that I'm living with cancer, and I'm very mindful. I live every day fully. And as you know, I run off marathons. I do dragon so boating. How many, how many, how many old mutuals uh, off marathons have you done now? Oh, I've done 12, 
12 halves, the two oceans half marathon, that is very, very tough. Yeah. Sometimes I don't know how I do these things, but I think it's really mind over matter. Absolutely. So what I do with my journey lately is I try to empower others. I try to tell them that you're not alone, that you can get through this. Yes. And I actually try to use my mind because I'm like I told you, I'm off the treatment. My gynecologist has died. He worked on my body, on my home. I had a polyp as well. So, and uh, my, my oncologist, her husband also passed away of cancer. And she's telling me I'm outliving everybody out there. Yeah. So what I do with my journey is um, I just go out and I, and I, and I simply live life. Yeah. They say cancer also affects the brain. I'm an authorizer. They say you become forgetful, the chemo brain. I can tell you I'm an authorizer at a huge insurance company and I authorize millions every day. So to me is, like I said, it's not what happens to you, it's really how you, you deal, deal with, with it. it. Yes. And I can tell you, it's when they tell me every time I have cancer, it is a huge shock. But when I leave those rooms, I just think, thus I'm going to beat once again. I don't know how long it's going <laughs> to keep on for. Oh, well, and yeah, so Something like, um, and death is destined for all of us. Absolutely. And cancer is a blessing today. I can say yes. cancer is a blessing. Cancer has taught me to be a stronger, wiser woman. It makes you more humble also. It, mm. it humbles you. Absolutely. And also I do dragon boating. It took me to Canada, took me to Bali, to, to Malaysia, to Jakarta. Wow. And that's dragon boating for breast cancer survivors. <laughs> and so cancer I, Oh, wow. and I'm also on the cancer survive ride. We are going to the rural areas once a day. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> once a year, over 10 days. I go to, I'm um, on the scans of my ride where the ladies are all on motorcycles. Mm -hmm. We go into rural areas mm -hmm. and we spread the message of hope. I always tell people when I come back to Cape Town at Horotuske Hospital complaining about, you know, about the long queues. Yes. <laughs> they have to wait in long queues. Up country, there's not even a queue. queue. Those people aren't even educated. They think that the death rate is high. It's because people don't know they have oh, cancer. cancer. So that is why in the Western Cape, it's the highest. And the reason why I also do, we I go out to educate is more people die of cancer than HIV, TV, malaria combined. Mm. So I have a passion to go out there to educate in schools. Wow, uh, that really uh, epitomizes for me what, what I firmly believe is that uh, my personal view is that cancer has not been a death sentence, it's been a life sentence and you, you, you really seem to be living that uh, thought. So uh, it's still, I'm still amazed by your stories and I've heard it so many times before. Um, Abida, if, 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 if I can come to you for a moment. Sure. And uh, as a social worker, I assume that you deal a lot with cancer patients and, and the emotions and, and feelings uh, that it is that they are that they are going through at that time. Uh, would you mind sharing some of that with us, please? Yes, of course. Um, you know, most of the patients, um, when they hear the news from the doctor um, that you have cancer, you know, they go in a complete shock. You know, they just hear the word cancer and they associate it with death. death. Because of all the negativeness out there. And um, some people actually <coughs> say they wish that they had a family member with when the doctor gave them that news because especially if they, they're older, you know, it's, it's, it, it's so shocking to themselves that they don't even know what to ask the doctor. You know, they just say, yes, that's mm. all. Mm. And when they come home and the family members ask, you know, now what did the doctor say? What type of cancer? How far is your cancer? I don't know. All I heard him say is that I have cancer. Cancer, yeah. yeah. I, I, I recall very much hearing my doctor so so i thought i had hemorrhoids and uh, i had to go for a colonoscopy and i was in the bathroom uh, this is after the procedure i'm in the bathroom and he walks into the ward and he's pass me near jacobs and this is a big burly afrikaner dude you look at him and he is a rugby player <laughs> and i'm me being me i'm in the bathroom i'll be there now and i'm walking out towards the bed and he looks at me and he says, unfortunately, the news isn't good. Um, it does look like you have cancer, but either way, you're going to have a bag. And I remember hearing, you're going to have a bag, but I stopped listening by cancer. And immediately I'm like, crap. 
and I'm going to die. And how long is my boys going to see me? Um, going through all of that. Yeah. And then it's, you need to come back on Friday. Um, we've done a biopsy. I'll have the results and we can confirm on Friday. This was a Tuesday. It was the longest four days of my life. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know what was it, what 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 was that like for you because I also came to realize that Friday came and it's confirmed you got cancer, mm -hmm. but now we need to see how far along the cancer is. So there's more tests to go for, more scans to go for, which means another wait because it's a medical aid authorization. Then the test gets done, and you got to wait for those results. Um, what went through your mind? Can I, just before you answer, can I also say that sometimes? The patient actually goes into denial. It mm. can't be. Yes. And yes, I was there. Yes. 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 You know, because no, I'm, 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 I'm going to seek another opinion. Yes. Because it's important. This can't be the right one. I'm, there's nobody in the family that has cancer. There's no ways. I'm healthy, you know. Mm. Yes, and there's no pain. Yeah. It was just like a lump. <laughs> yes. And then I was referred, and you know, when you're in that situation, it's like you just want the best. The best specialist, the best everything, the best. Yes. And this is where the blessings also come in because I didn't have to go and sit in a queue at the state hospital. So I, I was referred to one of the best professors in South, in the world actually, wow. and he was out in Powerville. Wow. And then they said I had to go for a biopsy. What a big word, a biopsy. I didn't <laughs> even know what a biopsy was, yes. what it entails. And fortunately, you worked from home. So I was alone in his rooms. There was no other patient. And there were stories lying on the, on the, and then I went through the stories and it sort of started giving me hope. And then it brought we, the calmness. It brought me calmness. So I always, I always regard it as, as blessings. When I see, when I work with state patients, when I, you know, when I support the state mm. patient, yes. then I can see the difference. And I actually reap the benefits of my journey. Although I have cancer, although I'm, it's bad, I'm incurable, it's advanced. But with those stories, I always count my blessings every mm. day. Sure. So I went for the biopsy and then the, he said to me, I've got, um, it was stage three at the time. When it comes back, it went to stage four. When it came back, it went to stage four. And that was the only four stages, as you know, with cancer. Yes. So he told me, I'm, I can have a mastectomy. I tell you, I didn't know what it is. <laughs> I, or a lumpectomy. I also didn't know what that was. It was just like huge words. So the lumpectomy is where they remove the lump and mm. the mastectomy is where they, they remove, remove the, the breast. breast. Yeah. So I cried my heart out because I couldn't, Imagine myself without the breast. I didn't even know about cancer. I know, I knew nothing about cancer. I didn't even know cancer survivors. Remember, this was 14 years ago. There were no cancer buddies. Yeah. Cancer association so wasn't true. so prevalent like it is today. Yes. So that is why I thought I have to empower myself and educate myself. He said I'm going to have chemotherapy and radiation. Do you know? I thought it was the same. Mm. And I said, Doc Doctor, you're going to have to take me through this. I didn't even have a clue. All I knew about chemotherapy is you're going to lose your hair. And that was okay for me because I was 46 at the time. So, so sorry, Auntie I, I yeah. just want to come in on that. Yeah. And, and from the social working point of view, how many patients do you find are too afraid to ask the doctor what Auntie Ray just asked? The majority of patients. Why yeah. do you think that is? Because some of them... Um, you know, because they go through the state system, so it's a long procedure before they actually mm. get told that they do have cancer. Um, those that are, are, are private, for them, it's much so much more easier yes. because there's always a family member going with, and they yes. are encouraged to bring someone with. You know, but with a state patient, there's so many tests that have to be done, and it's done over a period of time. You know, so they don't have that confirmation immediately, and they have all these doubts. Mm. You know, and family saying. No, don't listen, you know, and it's not so bad, you know, it's not cancer, it's probably going to be something Don't take chemo. Else, yes. <laughs> and, and the first thing they say, don't take chemo. Chemo is going to kill you. Yeah. You know, so they, there's all that negativeness out there. And so you have to actually sit down with the patient and actually ask, what did the doctor tell you? And, you know, how did he relay that information over to you? Okay. And some of them said, you know, that, you know, the doctor was very, very, um, you know, matter of fact, you know, you have cancer, um, we still have to do more tests to see, you know, how far the oh, cancer has progressed, you know, and um, we're going to do tests, but, you know, we suggest, you know, it's going to be done over this period of time. And the patient is saying, but, you know, I, I don't have anyone that can come with me every time, you mm. know, can't, can't I have an answer today, mm. you know? Um, 
I met an 81 year old yesterday and she said, you know, they, the, the GP, she's been going to the GP for a while and she's been saying, my breast is itching, you know, what do you think is causing it? And he's saying, no, it's probably the dawn moisturizer. Maybe you must change your moisturizer. But he's treating her for her diabetes and her cholesterol and everything else. And then one day she went to him and she said, you know, this itching is getting real, really bad. I, you know, I think I'm actually feeling a little lump in my breast. I think, you know, you need to check it out. And it's only then that he actually said, okay, I'm going to send you for a mammogram. And now because of her yeah. age, you know, she's too frail. Mm. Yeah. And now they've discovered, you know, these two vertebrae at the back, um, you know, that's, that's crumbling. So they need to treat that first and foremost. And they've actually told her, you know, I don't think we will be removing Moving your breast. Yeah. So yes, it's very, very frightening. She said at the beginning, she was in total denial. So along with that, so you've got the patient um, who's going through all this emotion yeah. and the family. What's it like for the family? Um, and, and especially when they come with Auntie Josie's secret recipe, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. trying to put it down on you. Um, what was that dynamic like for, for, for your family? I had to remain strong because I could see, mm -hmm. when, I told my, when I got out of the surgery, I told my husband I have cancer. And then he started crying and I thought, I don't need that. I really didn't mm. need it. And you know, my words to him was like, um, it wasn't a rage. It was just, it's not your breast, it's mine. I don't know why you're <laughs> crying. But it's like, I didn't, that is what, what I expected. I expected somebody to say, it's going to be okay. And, um, and, and I wasn't ready for this journey. I was really not ready. I don't think anyone is ever ready. Yeah. Yes, because it was like a huge shock. So when I got home, his mother's sister was there. And she told me, she actually really helped me a great deal. She says, you're too strong for this, man. As I know, you're going to get through all of this. And that is what I needed. I needed people to encourage me. And then when people came to tell me what to use, use cannabis, do this, do that, um, I would not put them down. I would say, yeah, no, I'll give it. Th but I actually followed my own heart. Oh. Yeah. And I followed what worked for me. And I took the chemotherapy. Eight sessions of the chemotherapy, I lost my hair. And I tried to get positives out of that. Like when I lost my hair, um, I just thought, I said to my one son, because he said, I don't like the way you look. So I said, I'm thinking, I'm looking cool. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I said, I'm saving on shampoo and blow dry. <laughs> you know, just to make it a yes. bit as if, um, as if it's okay. But it's, um, like Faisal said, it's hard because we must be there for them. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't, if we're going to be down there, they're going to come down with us. Yeah. So I, and, and like somebody once even told me, even if you pretend to be okay, that actually makes you feel better. better. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I just say on that like, you know, um, this lady said, when she was in denial, her son said, no, mommy, you know, I agree, you know, the, it can't be, not you, mm. and not at this age, we don't have cancer in the family. So yes, it makes it much more difficult if mm. the family members don't give the necessary support, support. Yes, yeah. to the definitely. And for, for, for me, it was a case uh -huh. of also, I made history in our family, both my mother's side and my father's side, yeah. no history of cancer. And I, I remember speaking to my boys and and they were nine and eleven at the time and i sort of related to them in terms of the game that they were playing they were playing minecraft and they had just done this patch or an update to the actual game itself and i put it to them in that terms like you mm -hmm. know you were playing the game and it was giving you issues and then mm -hmm. you had to do the patch you remember why i said yes no the patch was going to fix that and that and i said to them dad needs to get a patch um, wow. I've got cancer and that, and I remember my son, my eldest son, Zane, his look. And it was like, be strong, Faisal. And all I wanted to do was grab him and cry. Mm -hmm. And um, it's okay. be strong. That's, mm. that's, that yeah. is what I needed. My mom, my late mom, um, she was also ill. Um, and she looked at me and she was petrified. Mm. And it was like, you have to be strong here. Yes. And it's like, we have to suppress what it is we are feeling. Yes. That emotion, mm. that anger. Mm. Um, and, and the people going, you know, as a Muslim, it, it's all a test from Allah Ta'ala. Mm. Uh, Sabur my boy. Um, mm. and, and, and all of this sort of thing. And you know what, I didn't need to hear that. I know yes. that this is the way my creator is oh. testing me. 
I'm still asking him, why me? What did I do to deserve this? Mm -hmm. At the time, I was chairperson of the Thornton Islamic Society's committee. Um, I was busy negotiating with the city to get a mosque built in Thornton. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is seen as a form of jihad. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm doing all of this good. Why me? What did I do? What did I do to deserve this? And I'm, it's like they don't want to allow you to, to, to have this. And I started feeling like people were projecting their fears onto me. Yeah. Well, you know, you're saying that um, some patients have so much difficulty in coping with that concept that they actually go in a state of depression. Mm. You know, and, and because they, be, you know, go in that state, they first, that depression first needs to be, you know, treated, treated before yeah. they can go any further. Yes. Yes. Do, you, do you know what it's like? And I don't know if you experienced this. My neighbor comes over, awesome, awesome man, love him to bits. And he's Faisal, my boy, you need to stay positive. No, Mr. Zasolva, I am, I am, I'm gonna beat this thing. <laughs> no, you don't understand, you need to stay positive. No, but I am. No, but the doctor's confident we caught this early enough and you know, it's gonna all be good. No, you don't understand, stay positive. And I'm looking at him and I'm going, you're right, I need to stay positive. That's it, my boy. You keep fighting. And I realized that this was his fears. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, was that, it was his yeah. fears. He wasn't hearing me. Mm -hmm. I remember telling my family, I'm putting my faith, as much as I was questioning my creator, mm -hmm. I'm putting my faith that my creator is guiding the doctors. They have my biopsies. They have my test results. They have my scans. And whatever treatment it is they're going to prescribe, that's what I'm going to follow. And nobody respected that. I still got the book with the secret recipes. I still got the green diet. I still got the cannabis oil. I still got all of this. Mm -hmm. Stay away from chemo. And yes, I didn't need it. But yeah, uh, uh, what, what, was it the same for you in terms of... But just before you answer that, can I just say that, you know, we need to respect the wish of, of the, the patient. patient, also the dignity yes. of the patient. There are patients that actually say, I don't want any treatment. Mm. I want to enjoy quality of life. life. Yes. yes. I don't want to be sick every alternate day. I don't, I don't want to lose my hair. I don't want my appetite or my lifestyle to change. I want the best of whatever life God has meant me to have. Yes, yeah. yeah. You know, now and, there are patients and diffusing. And the loved ones need to respect that. Yes. You know, mm. I have a patient recently that says, you know, I'm tired of all the treatment. I'm ready to go home. Why can't my husband and my son accept, accept that? It, yes. yes. It's my journey. It's my life. And also, it's like with the kidney cancers as well. Yes. You know, the child maybe says, um, I want to have my leg amputated because of cancer, but the parents wouldn't want that. And I know it, it happened in a community already. So yeah, like you were saying, and like Faisal was saying, people come to you and people give all these kinds of recipes. What I do, respect goes a long <laughs> way. Yes. Do you know somebody even, um, it was still at the Cancer Association, this lady had uh, brain cancer. Somebody told her she must use the things that you clean the drain with. What do you call that? Oh, J Chase, J J J J yes. Fluid. And then I said, no, but you don't have brain cancer. She's got brain cancer. <laughs> you know? So yeah, people come with odd, odd recipes yeah. Yeah. and tell you what to do. But you know, I just have respect. I just said, yeah, they know that's a wonderful idea. But I don't tell you I'm not going to use it. People discourage me from using, uh, to, from taking chemotherapy. <laughs> and what I did was, you can go and read about it and get and get what it's about. Yes. And then I always used to go for the survival rate. Doctor, now what is the survival rate? And I went for my chemo and I actually got sick the second time and then they reduced it. So I had that same conversation. Doctor, isn't, don't you think you're giving me too much and that you can't do in the state like you're saying? Mm. Yes. You see, that is just the um, privilege I had where I could have a conversation and say, not this week, next week, not a lumpy, not a mastectomy, a lumpy, a lumpy to me. And yeah, and, and it's really not easy because you have to fight your battles, you have to listen to people, you have to listen to the doctors. So like Faisal is saying, and it's not easy in families as mm. well, because yeah. somebody came with notes as well. You think I want to read all these notes? Yes. Yeah. I've got this cancer journey, I just still can't go and read notes and things, you know? So then I had to find my way through all of this. 
and now what I'm doing. After now finding my way and making things work for me, because I took myself to radiation, I wanted to take myself for chemotherapy, but they told me if I have an accident, the insurance won't pay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is how I wanted to be. I wanted to survive because my boys were still young. They were all at school. Mm. And you know, you have to be this brave woman. Although, and I actually shaved my hair before the time. So my son did a talk at Old Mutual the other day because I told him, just tell them what your thoughts were when I went through it. Yeah. And you know, one of it was that I only heard after 14 years, he said, my mother shaved the hair before the time. I didn't even know. And then when we asked her, now why are you shaving your hair? She said, I didn't want I didn't want chemo to get me. I wanted I wanted to be one up for chemo. So I took my ear off before, before chemo before actually did chemo it. Could. So yeah. those are the things the children watch us. Yeah. But just 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 yeah. on that the chemo question and I've met people who've gone through chemo and haven't lost their hair. It depends. And they haven't thrown up. And mm -hmm. and I don't think a lot of people understand this. Yes. You get different cocktails yes. as it's called. Yeah. Different strengths. Yes. Like yes. you said, your 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 dosage got adjusted. Yes. Yeah. And the, I think people need to realize this when, when don't poison yourself by taking that stuff. Yeah. Mm. Patient, some patients actually say radiation was worse than the chemo. Than the chemo yeah. And others, the majority again says, you know, the chemo was the worst. So everybody's journey D is different. unique. Mm. Absolutely. For sure. I mean, if, if uh, to use me as an example, so I had this major surgery where I got cut up on the gut, my intestines got taken out, they removed my anus from the top, put everything back and then put the stoma over here. And the journey was supposed to be five days in ICU and 10 days in a general ward before being discharged to go home. I was in general for three days, uh, ICU for three days, in general for five, eight days I went home. And my physical condition at the time had a lot to do with that in terms mm. of my healing quickly. Yes but it's different for someone else. I know someone has been in hospital for 25 days yes. instead of the 15. Mm. So everybody's different. Um, I, I think a message in, and, uh, that we need to share is that no two cancers are the same. The Absolutely. same way no two people is the same. Absolutely. Um, what worked for the neighbors, mothers, boyfriends, girlfriends, Absolutely. what not might work mm. for you. Yeah. Um, and we are all different. Yes. And irrespective of where you come from, what mm. religion you are, what profession you are, I had a doctor Social that status. told me, that actually told me, I wish I was on the other side. She was just diagnosed recently. And I mean, she spent, she started off with gastro and immediately she was admitted to hospital and they diagnosed leukemia. And she was hospitalized for 46 days. Wow. Yeah. And she was in total shock. She said, mm. I just wish I can wake up and say, this is not me, this is not happening to me. Mm. So yes, it's very, very frightening. Yes, and also with medication as well. I'm on a, on, on a cord literazole, and the side effects are like bone ache, muscle pain, lots of side effects. But I'm not, I'm not experiencing mm. it. We, uh, where you will get people that really tell me, are you, are you really on it? And I take it daily yeah. and I've got no side effects. But I don't know if it's the exercise I also do, like I do but the that, running. That, that does I do running, that yes. Very vital and like, indeed. For example, if you were a runner, you can, you can wake up one morning and you can say, no, I'm not going to run today. For the cancer survivors, almost like you are forced to do the to things do that you're doing. So, I so sorry to cut you mm. out, no, but we are fine. running out of time. Okay. So if, if I can give everybody, uh, the two of you, 30 seconds each for a message to a newly diagnosed ca cancer patient, a long-term fighter, um, and to family and friends um, in, in, in terms of dealing with this sort of thing. Okay, this is what I always do, even on my Facebook page as well. I go with the ABC. If you get diagnosed with cancer, yes, it is a huge shock. What you need there, the A is for attitude. You need the right attitude. So Sarah, surround yourself with people who add value to your life. So attitude, believe. Believe in a higher power, yes. whoever you think your creator is, believe in that. Believe in yourself, believe you are going to get through it. The C is choice. Make good choices. And I also use the C for cancer chose me, but I choose not to own it. I, but I allowed it to actually change who I am. And then there's the three P's as well, pre, perseverance and patience. And just don't give up, don't give up on yourself. Mm. And there's two things I did when I got diagnosed. I said to myself, I can either, ex either accept it or go sit in the corner. And what I did, I accepted 
my challenge and I'm working through it. It's a lifestyle change for me. So true. Thank you. Yeah. Abida? Um, as you said, acceptance is the most important part. Yes. Uh, first and foremost, because, you know, that, that, that constitutes the whole healing process. Yes. Just embracing, you know, this is my journey, own it, you know, and then you become more positive and it's one day at a time. There are no guarantees in life, mm. but it's not a death sentence. You need to change your attitude and you need to adopt a more positive path and surround yourself with people that are positive, mm. you know, that will add value to your life. Thank you, ladies. Um, and with that being said, I, I think the message that we are trying to share here is that, as we said earlier, no two cancers are the same, the same way no two people are the same. Everyone's journey is different. And the biggest thing, as, as a cancer patient, the one thing nobody, nobody asked me was, what is it that you need, Faisal? What do you need? Everybody was telling me what they thought I needed. So to the family, to the friends and the loved ones of, of your cancer patients, find out what it is they need. And it, if it is to be left alone, leave them alone. Give them the time because it is so important that we process this. And also, sorry, um, you're not alone. Yeah. There's, there's lots of support out there, you know, support groups. Support groups, for sure. You know, organizations, just your family. Cancer buddies. Cancer buddies. So with that, um, um, we, 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 unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, but we invite you to come join us again next week. And hopefully, uh, two lovely ladies will join us too. Uh, as we take this journey further, where we're going to look at your medical treatment versus the Google treatment. We thank you for your time. And we'll see you next week.